Okay, so we're working on the uh, 80cc bicycle and uh, we're gonna change out and uh, do some tap and die on the manifold in order to put in a boost bottle. So it's uh, pretty simple to do that. Uh, this right here is the carburetor and then this is the manifold area here. And uh, pretty much everything is connected with Allen wrenches. So, uh, so yeah, we're just gonna take it apart real quick. I've already marked where I wanna put the attachment. I just use, use one of these little nipples right here. And you'll notice on the bottom it has a thread. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole into the manifold right here and then uh, tap and dye it. So it will actually create a hole with uh, a threads inside here. And what I decided to do is to put it kind of on a little offset like that. Because if I did it straight up and down, my boost bottle is gonna go in this location right here with the hose and that might just rub up against the spark plug area. So I'm gonna kind of offset it just a little bit on purpose and uh, hopefully everything will go well. Okay, so we got the manifold off. It's pretty easy. It just has two little Allen wrench screws on there. And it does have a manifold gasket there. You want to be careful of that, not to break it. But usually it just sticks on there, all right? So it's kind of flush. It probably won't break off. So I've already, again, I've already marked where I want to put uh, the connection and where I want to drill the hole. And what this will do is we'll tap and die that in just an offset location. And then we'll be able to connect the rest of the boost bottle tube uh, to the manifold. So I'm just gonna drill a little pilot hole right there. And it's pretty easy on something like this. This is uh, like cast aluminum, I believe. So it's relatively soft. So you just use a regular drill. And so pretty simple. That's harder through all, all the way. You know, if you want to be really safe, you can put that in a vise, um, but I've done this enough where you could just hold it by your hand if you're careful. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with uh, tap and die sets, this is a, basically a small little tutorial. I'm not an expert at all, uh, but the tap and die, what that does, it'll, it'll create threads inside, uh, typically metal is what you use it for, but I suppose you could use it on other things. Actually did the tap and die on PVC, uh, it works pretty well. So uh, in this case we're going to be doing it on the manifold and the manifold is uh, cast aluminum so it's relatively soft and I've already drilled the pilot hole in the direction that I want to put my nipple and again we're going to put it in an offset direction like that. So I have my pilot hole already and that's to keep the larger uh, drill bit from wandering and what you do if you want to do tap and die is you have uh, whatever you want to insert into uh, the application you want to get a drill bit that's just a little bit larger um, or a little bit smaller rather than where the threads are right there okay so we're gonna go ahead and drill that and hopefully if all goes well we'll have a decent enough pre-drilled size hole And just be patient with it. There we go. And then you can just gently and gradually increase the size if you're not comfortable with going with a larger size first. And there's really no rush on this, so why not?
There we go. So we got a decent size hole in there now. And it's at the uh, proper angle where we wanted it to. So, you know, again, this is popping off in that area. You know, maybe we could even go to a larger size there. So, <clears throat> so then what you do is you go over to your tap and die set. And that's the tap and die set. And you just simply find out which ones fit. So obviously that one's too big. So that one looks pretty good right there. And on each tap and die, they have the designation. So this one would be one eighth. And then, so what you do is you go over to the corresponding section and you find the one eighth. So easy way to do it is just to line that up there, see whether or not it's the same size, and also make sure that the threads line up, okay? And as long as you have those threads line up, you should be pretty good to go. Now you'll notice that these are tapered a little bit up front, and that will allow you to put it inside the hole. Looks like we need to go just a little bit bigger, okay? So we're gonna enlarge that hole just a little bit more, and then we're gonna break out the actual uh, tap set. So let's try to do this without hurting ourselves. You never want to take off too much. So this is your little T-bar here. You can just put in the tap and tighten it. Okay, and for this, this is just like cast aluminum, again, so it's pretty soft, so you can just do this by hand. And kind of give it just a little bit of a start, and it should grab. There we go, that's grabbed nicely, see that? See how it's just twisting in there, just a little bit. Let's put some constant pressure on there. Now if you were doing much harder steel or some other kind of metal, then you know, probably couldn't do this by hand, okay? So this again is just cast aluminum, relatively soft, you can do this by hand. Thin metals you can probably do by hand uh, holding this, but you know, normally if you want to be safe, you can put it in a vise. Um, and you can also, if you have very hard metals, you want to do something a little bit more precision, you can put this tap uh, into you know, an overhead drill press or something like that to give yourself a little bit more stabilization. But you can just see, and every once in a while you can kind of go back, just push down, not too hard, nice, gentle, firm pressure and twist. And you can actually see inside of there how the tap has come out. Let's see here. There we go. You see, it's just, just twisting in there, just creating threads. It's really neat. So then just back that out. Again, gently, because you just created threads in there. You don't want to ruin those. Try not to have it wobble all around because you know you you don't want to mess up those threads. And then what you have is nice threaded area. And hopefully if all goes well, that'll go in. It's perfect. That'll go in, that'll fit perfectly. That's really all you want. You don't want too much, okay? So I'll tighten that in. I'm going to put a little bit of goop in there, but that's what you want. So the reason they call it tap and die is that you can not only do the tap, and, you know, we just uh, talked about doing that, which creates threads, really professional, really nice looking. But you also can do the die. So if you had a uh, bolt um, or a screw, 
or something similar, usually a bolt, not a screw. Anything with threads on it, you can actually take a die that's the corresponding size and also has the corresponding uh, thread distribution, and you could re-thread it if those were stripped out a little bit, or if you had a blank piece of you know, cylindrical metal that didn't have any threads whatsoever on it and you wanted to create new threads on it, you could take the die and you could just create a new, um, new threads on there. And you use this piece for that. So this is the T-bar essentially for that. You can see it has a little dimple and you simply just put it in there and you do basically the reverse of what we just did, okay? So it's, that's why they call it tap and die. It's really nice. So we're just gonna reassemble this back to where it goes. Let's just do a little test fit just to make sure I didn't mess up on my position. That's pretty good. So it's all set. So you see this is offset here. So it's not gonna hit where the spark plug wire comes in. Okay, so if I had it like that, it would hit. So I offset that on purpose. And let's tighten that down just a little bit. That's pretty good. So even though it has some threads, you can still see inside of there. See that inside there? You don't really want that nipple coming all the way down inside there all the way because that you don't want to restrict flow the idea is to create a little bit more flow inside there so you don't want the bottom of this nipple to go all the way down and obstruct the flow of the gas and the air coming in from the carburetor okay so that's basically where you want it that's good position again got our gasket let's gently put our carb out of the way just a little bit and we're going to put this back on nice and gently. I just like to hand tighten these in the beginning. Because keep in mind, this is all cast aluminum basically. So you want to put enough pressure on here, but you don't want to put too much pressure because aluminum is soft. All right, so what we have here is the boost bottle. And uh, for anybody that saw my, saw my bike build, I kind of explained the purpose of the boost bottle in these uh, two-stroke engines. And it basically just helps with the uh, performance of the engine. And it really does work. So there's been a lot of other videos out there that have uh, talked about the boost bottle and how they work and uh, you know some people like cutting off the supply that goes in and out of the boost bottle and how that affects the carburetor and stuff like that so but you know my experience if uh, if you don't uh, or if you're skeptical or whatever if they do work or not uh, they do and you know I, again I just made this thing um, out of uh, PVC this is really just you know schedule 40 PVC plumbing and I did the tap here from with my tap and die set with the uh, nipple on that side and then this is really just aquarium tube so uh, pretty simple pretty inexpensive and I just shot it with a can of spray paint um, I'm reinstalling it because I took it off to shoot it with the spray paint but really all I do is um, I just install it with zip ties because it's just plastic and there isn't any mechanical parts in it that would require much more uh, of a secure mounting bracket so I don't need to create something that really isn't necessary and uh, these zip ties are pretty strong pretty handy you know you can always just add a couple more if you want it's no big deal so we're just gonna put that kind of in place in general right there we can adjust it a little bit later but so what we want to do now is we want to attach the hose to the boost bottle to where that is so if we have that there that'll kink a little bit let's see do I want to put that there let's just cut that off and uh, let's cut it off just a little bit just 
This aquarium hose is pretty inexpensive. So, you know, don't worry about it. If it's uh, not in the exact area that you don't want, you can always just make it to size. So I just heat it a little bit. And get that in there. So, make sure there's no gas or anything inside of it when you're obviously heating it. Um, but I know what I'm doing, hopefully. So, that won't be a problem. Let's just tighten that up a little bit more there. All right, and really that's all you have. I do like to put a little zip tie around this side, even though we've kind of heated it. But why not? These things are inexpensive. So what we got is our which is installed right underneath the gas tank. We got our line, goes down into the carburetor. We just did our tap right inside of here. That's not going anywhere. If uh, for any reason, if that has just a little bit of a leak or something, you can always put you know, a little JB weld or something in there. That'd be fine. Got the aftermarket carburetor, which is here, and that's way better, way better than the stock carburetor. Those things are junk. So uh, let's take it up and take it out and see if it runs. Okay, we got everything assembled. Let's uh, take her for a ride, see what happens. Let's go over this just real quick. What we did is uh, on the bike itself, we have uh, we got the new carburetor on here, and then we got the manifold. We did a little tap here and connected the boost bottle to the system here. Uh, Google boost bottle or check out my original uh, build of the bike uh, to talk about what the boost bottle does if you're not familiar with it. Just really helps out with the two stroke engines. So I had to take a little bit of time. There was some gunk down in the bottom of the carburetor. I had to clean that off. So, uh, but that's basically what we got there. It's a fun little bike. It's a little 80cc and, uh, and there you go.